Hi, my name is Taylor Christian, and I'm the Field Operations Director for the Ohio Land and Liberty Coalition. I'd like to start off by thanking the Center for Energy Education uh, for allowing me this opportunity to uh, speak a little bit today. So the Land and Liberty Coalition is a conservative grassroots organization, uh, and we support local renewable energy projects by focusing on private property rights, economic development, and good stewardship of the land. So with anything that's kind of new to a community, uh, there are going to be a lot of questions. And anytime there are questions, uh, there are always a lot of rumors. Um, misinformation can be a pretty big obstacle for any kind of development, and solar development is, is uh, no exception here. Um, so I'm going to dispel a couple of the common myths I hear uh, in the field all the time. So solar panels still generate electricity, even when it's cloudy or raining or snowing. Um, you know, with, with bifacial panels, even when there's snow on the top, uh, the sunlight's photons are still bouncing off the snow into the underside of those panels, still generating electricity. And with the way the angles work, um, the snow is going to slide right off as the panels kind of angle throughout the day. It's also important to note that um, photons still make it through the clouds. That's how we're able to see during the day when it's cloudy and even get sunburned when it's cloudy. Um, the rain and the snow actually help to clean dust off of the panels, allowing them to operate more efficiently without requiring someone to come clean them off. Uh, another common one I hear is that local residents are going to be left with the cleanup. Uh, that's also not true. So the state requires developers to put forth decommissioning bonds to ensure that the project is finished up properly. So even if the company does end up going bankrupt, the money for cleanups already there. So the panels will be removed at the end of their lifetime, allowing that land to go back to what it was being used for beforehand, or if the landowner has other plans for it, allowing that landowner to do what they feel is appropriate for their land. Uh, another common one I hear um, is that uh, solar panels are gonna produce a blinding glare. Uh, solar panels are less reflective than your average window and that's actually by design. Um, solar panels produce electricity by absorbing sunlight. Uh, if they were reflecting it, that would be very counterproductive to their purpose. Solar panels will poison the groundwater. Uh, there's nothing in a solar panel that can leak into the ground, poisonous or otherwise. Uh, they're made of solids and it's non-toxic chemicals that um, just th they're not going to leak into the ground. It doesn't happen that way. Another one I hear is that solar farms decrease property values. Uh, multiple studies have shown that there is really no impact to property values with solar farms. Um, you know, a lot of the developers plant vegetation around the project to limit impacts to view, sh view shed. And panels operate silently and produce no odor. Um, they actually make for pretty peaceful neighbors. And uh, a lot of the people that, um, at least where I live, moved where we lived for peace and quiet. And that's exactly what solar farms can help deliver. So, uh, you know, once again, I'd like to thank the Center for Energy Education for providing me the opportunity to speak today. Um, if anyone has any questions about my presentation, uh, please feel free to reach me at my email there, tchristian at landandlibertycoalition.com. Um, and also, please feel free to reach out to me if you're interested in protecting our private property rights and standing for economic development in your community. Love to help get you involved. And if you'd like to hear more about the Land and Liberty Coalition, uh, feel free to like us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter. Thank you very much.